Good morning and welcome to the Isles of Scilly and specifically the island of St Mary's. My name is Caroline and I'm here travelling with my other half Andy who is right now behind the camera and today we are going to spend one day on a set of two wheels each trying to explore as much of what this island's got to offer. <laughs> can film you falling off. Hey, Sarah, do you want to go up a little bit? Yeah, I feel like that's pretty good and like... No when, you, when you go, just have a little test drive because you might feel you might you might come okay, up. Okay, sure, right. thanks. We picked up our bikes and even though we kind of had a bit of an idea as to places that we wanted to visit on the island, the chap gave us a specific bike map which obviously lets us know where we can cycle and where we can't cycle. So we just had a quick five minutes on the picnic benches outside of the bike shop just to work out exactly how we were going to get to the different places. Now that we've set off, uh, you can probably hear the aircraft either taking off or landing behind me because obviously St Mary's does have the airport on it. We are at the moment cycling down country roads. We've soon seen a car obviously pass us, but it's beautifully quiet once you get out of Hugh Town. There's only probably been about three or four cars that have passed us so far. There's been a few of the golf carts as well, because if you're not really interested in cycling around the island and you want to get around it quite quickly, one of the options is to rent one of those golf carts and there's zero effort that really gets put into that, except for just needing to press a pedal. It's really nice as well how it's quite built up with a lot of trees and it's got a very different feel in comparison to all of the other islands. First up that we've come to is a nature trail that was on the map that we got from the tourist information centre. And I think if we go in this direction, it takes us to like a lake or a pond or something. And just the idea of a nature trail and hopefully getting to see some nature might be quite nice. But the sign does very clearly say no bikes. So we're just having to put them up against this fence. And it was really weird because at the bike hire shop, we did say to the guy, well, do you have any locks for us to lock up the bike? And he just kind of giggled at us and he said, oh no, you don't need to worry about that. No one's gonna steal a bike, not during the day at least anyway. He said, if we do day rentals, we don't bother giving you guys locks. He said, even the cars, the people who own the cars around the island, they just leave their keys in the cars, which kind of reminds me a little bit of what we were being told by Jordanians in our last big trip to Jordan. And they were saying that they did exactly the same thing. And of course, Andy then cracked the joke saying, oh, we didn't need to rent any bikes. We could have just taken someone's car keys and used their car to explore the island today. Whilst the Wildlife Trust have put up signs saying that we're really sorry about the state that the boardwalk's in, we are aware and it is on our to-do list. I think it's great that they haven't closed it off because I remember when we were in the Norfolk Broads and we pulled up at the Cockshoot Broad and unfortunately they just completely closed it off. And I imagine it's probably just a little bit overgrown, much like this one, but I'm loving walking through this. We've just been admiring all of the moss and the lichens there, clinging onto tree branches. And we just figure that it must get incredibly foggy or perhaps the, the sea mist that comes in is just so intense because surely in order for those sorts of things to be growing it needs a lot of moisture. I guess we just had no idea what we we're going to be coming across when popping off of our bikes here and I think that's maybe what makes it all the more exciting. It's not like Instagram or something has spoiled it for us or let us know what was coming up. <laughs> I don't know what they are, but they've got this 
And here marks where the body of Sir Cloudlessly Shovel was found after his ship was wrecked and his body was supposedly washed ashore. That happened back in 1707, but much later on in history, a woman admitted that she'd actually suffocated him to death and that he had actually washed up on shore just barely alive. And the reason for that being was that back in those days, the law dictated that if a person's body was washed up on shore dead, then you were allowed to take anything of any worth that was on their bodies. But if the person was still alive, it was against the law to be able to take anything of any worth. She took that to her deathbed, but as she was dying, she did eventually confess to what she'd done. His body now, I believe, is buried in central London, I think at Westminster Abbey. This is here at Porthelic Bay, and it's the area that it's brought us out to when we've left the nature reserve, and it is incredibly quiet. There's no one else really around. There's like the odd aeroplane that comes across, but other than that, it's just the bird song in the nature. You've got beautiful wild flowers growing that I've never seen anywhere on the mainland of the UK before. And then what's really cool is some of the sea rocks resembles a packed up camel so you can really clearly see the camel's neck and its head but then where its normal size hump would be the idea is, is that it's loaded up. I think it's the loaded camel rather than the packed up camel and it's packed up to be able to take goods away with it across the desert. And I can kind of actually see this normally when I come across these sorts of things they're like it looks like this I'm a bit like mm, I don't see it but this one I do days ago when we were on St Martin's we found on the side of the road an honesty box that had a really small jar of apple and blackberry jam. We ended up having that in half porridge for most of the mornings this week and it has been delicious but we've pretty much devoured it all and I've just spotted that they've got some apple and blackberry jam here. I appreciate it's not going to be exactly the same recipe but unfortunately they don't have any way in which we can swap out change like they did over on St Martin's and it's just one of those drop boxes and we just don't have any change at the moment. I'm hoping that we'll be able to cycle back this way and maybe we can go and get like a coffee or some cake or something from one of the cafes on the islands and break down some of our bigger notes. One of the things that we learned on our walking tour yesterday on Samson was that once the trees have been cut down that are quite native to this area, it becomes very difficult to get them planted and growing again. And so there's a lot of trees that are found on the coast of California, such as the Monterey Pines, because they love that coastal breeze with the coastal sea salt spray. And they seem to have done really well on these islands. top of the nature trail loop is a winery and vineyard. It's called Holy Vale and this is the one where you can come and take a daily guided tour and it just so happens that today it's at midday and it just so happens that at midday we've walked past the top of it so it's super awkward because the guide comes and meets people at the gate and obviously we were just having a little bit of a nosy to see what it was like and he was like hi are you here for the tour now I'm not really much of a drinker so I'm not so interested in doing the wine tasting and the tour of it but if you are and you do quite like your wine then it's at the Holy Vale one because they do have four in total across the island. It's their smallest one where they run the tours and do the wine tasting. The nature trail has got an incredibly wild once more. It's very, very rooty and uneven underfoot. And there was a sign saying, you know, it's unlike the rest of the island and you should only really be coming down here if you're very able-bodied. 
it's surrounded by these gigantic elm trees which give it this really nice shaded feel and there's bits of water and we've been lucky enough to see some eels as well Miraculously, our bikes are still here, not locked up. I say that it's been a couple of hours since we left them. If we tried to do this in South London, I think it would have been gone within a couple of minutes rather than a couple of hours still being around. Next stop that we're now biking along to is Palestry Bay. It's supposed to be one of the most popular beaches on St Mary's. My guess is that it's popular for good reason and so I'm expecting it to be quite pretty. Our hope is that we'll be able to find somewhere a little bit secluded along the beach to have a picnic lunch. We still had a bit of the fresh crab left over from yesterday and the sourdough bread so we just packed up some sandwiches this morning. But this island is a little bit on the undulating side and yeah the hills they're taking it out of me. The guy at the bike shop said that if we were going to come to this beach that we should probably put the bikes up at the top and then walk down just because it's quite a downward slope which obviously is great fun going down. Not so great coming back up but he did also say that it was really bumpy and as we've just come to I suppose the brow of the hill we can see that a couple of other people have also left their bikes at the top so I figure this is probably the spot. If this was our first day visiting the Isles of Scilly, what would you think of this beach? If it was our first day, I would say it looks pretty spectacular. Oh but, yeah. Um, I guess we it's not our first day, so we've been spoilt by some, probably some of the best beaches we've ever seen, uh, which is a, a big statement to make based on the Isle of Harris and Lewis trip we did two years ago. But I think it wins out down here, especially like St. Martin's and all the other ones. And Samson, Samson yesterday. Yes, yeah, stunning. And with nice weather, unlike Scotland. Maybe because we were so blown away by the beaches on St. Martin's and on Samson that when we got out onto this one, we were just a bit like, oh, don't get me wrong, it's nice. But if I think back to our very, very first day when we went to St. Agnes, <laughs> And we think about the bar that yeah. joined Goo to St Agnes and when we got to that I was just like wow this is spectacular but actually it's probably not too dissimilar and I think this is what happens when you get traveling and yep. you get to experience and see lots and lots of different things you turn into travel snobs like myself and really I think what I need to do is just take a step back and say this is stunning and we are just really, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, really, really appreciate it. And appreciate as well just how lucky we are to actually be here. And this is actually a, a lovely, a lovely beach to be having lunch in. When I packed it in her lunchbox this morning, it was in pristine condition. And now she's just trashed it. <laughs> it's so not true. <laughs> and I would also like to point out that I made him his breakfast and his coffee and then he made our lunches because I appreciate that this isn't the first time where you've been like, and I made us lunch. <laughs> like, we do share things. It just comes across right now like we don't and that you just wait on me hand and foot. Cheese. Cheese. Delightful. One thing that this beach has got going for it is that it's got a tree swing and we have not found this on any of the other islands or on any of the other beaches on St Mary's. And what I love is that like everything on these islands, you just don't have hordes of people, you don't have queues of people wanting to use it. This has pretty much been free the whole time that we've been down at this beach.
the initial plan for this beach had been for us to go for a bit of a dip and I had brought along my swimmers and towel but what I hadn't realized is that it's actually a very rocky and seaweedy coastline so we've seen kayakers go out from this area and I guess to see things like rock pooling creatures we do still have a full day tomorrow so it might be that tomorrow we finally get to go for a dip in the waters but I think as the afternoon's starting to press on a little bit we're going to head off the beach now and back up to collect our bikes. Just cycling along the country lanes and I can only assume that this has probably been planted on the edge of someone's garden that it's probably their house on the other side. The amount of tropical plants that they've got and then there's this which apparently Andy spotted earlier on today but I completely missed it and I just expect to see something like this in like Spain or Portugal somewhere like that. It's just amazing that you can come across it on a country road in the UK. We've stashed the bikes once again because I think the coastal path it starts here again and once again the coastal path you can't take the bikes on. We cycled out to Pininis Head. My understanding is a lot of people tend to come here on an evening because it's really close to Hugh Town and when they've come back on the boats from having visited other islands it's just a nice evening stroll to take. The lighthouse here was built in 1911 and it superseded the one that was on St Agnes. We visited the island on our first full day and learned that that lighthouse was pretty rubbish because the light was powered by burning coal. And if you know anything about burning coal, it generates an awful lot of thick smoke and it meant that the light was incredibly dim, mostly red, and unfortunately a lot of ships were still crashing into the rocks so this one was very much needed. Pininis Head is also home to a lot of fantastic rock structures and a lot of them are supposed to look like other things that we know of so there's supposed to be a cantilevered stone, there's one called a toaster, there's another one that's a druid's chair, I think there's also another kitchen one that's something like pots and pans so I'll have a bit of an investigate and see which ones I can spot. And he's very much in his element right now, taking loads of photographs of the seascape with the dramatic coastal cliffs and the rocks and boulders and the sea swells are crazy around here too. So I'm just taking in my surroundings and one of the things that I can't help but notice is these tiny purple flowers that are just growing wild in the grasses, they've all pretty much lost their vibrant purple colour. Thinking back to last year when we were up in North Wales and we'd taken the day trip across to Anglesey where we went to go and see the light house and I just remember seeing all of these purple flowers still out at the coast but they were really vibrant and they were at the peak of their colouring and I think it just goes to show that even though that was May half term last year this is May half term this year the difference in climate just because of how much further south we are down here really does go a long way to show and help explain as well as to why it's able to host lots of tropical plants too. We're likely going to need a manic cycle back because we have got an amazing view out over the airport and we've just heard the propellers whiz on up and I think we're going to get to see a plane actually take off along the runway. Wow. 